गुड इवनिंग फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर विजय किरण आई एम जी सीनियर कंसल्टेंट नेफ्रोलॉजिस्ट एट एशियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ नेफ्रोलॉजी यूरोलॉजी सिलीगुड़ी वेस्ट बेंगाल टूडे आई एल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट डायलिसिस एंड द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ डायलिसिस आई विल ट्राई टू सिंप्लीफाई दी फैक्ट्स सो दैट एवरीबडी कैन अंडरस्टैंड एंड द फोबिया रिगार्डिंग दायलिसिस डायलिसिस इज रिमोट नाउ लेट एस नो वॉट इज बेसिकली डायलिसिस before knowing that we should know what as our kidney do in the body our kidneys are god given organs which help to filter the blood and remove all the toxins from the body so while filtering this blood the million molecules and the smaller molecules which are toxins like urea creatinine all those things are removed and a urine is formed and from this uh to- this is the basic method where the toxins are removed and they are excreted out from the body even in fourth or fifth class elementary classes it is taught that excretory system removes toxins from the body so that is what is kidney's function it filters blood and produces urine but there are many other functions of the kidney which we should also remember like kidney helps in the production of hemoglobin kidney helps in the healthy Uh, bones by the production of vitamin d the active form of vitamin d so there are n number of other functions of the kidney but the basic function of the kidney is filtering of blood <clears throat> now suppose due to any causes either it is diabetes or hypertension or any temporary cause for example like taking pain killers or snake bite or infection induced kidney injury which is called as aki if the kidneys have stopped functioning either temporarily or permanently what we have to do is as human beings we may not be as perfect as the normal god given kidney but what we can at least try to do is to filter the blood and remove all these toxins so that the other organs other tissues are not affected so this is dialysis dialysis is derived from a greek word and it means dia means uh, separating lysis is filtering so we are removing toxin products from the body that's all dialysis does not affect the kidney dialysis does not at all cause any problem to the kidney neither it improves the kidney function what it basically does is it filters the blood so with this we have to keep in mind mm, so many co- patients do ask us whether this dialysis has to be done lifelong or once it is done we have to keep on doing it so please keep this in mind if the cause for the renal shutdown is temporary which happens in acute kidney injury the dialysis which we do is also temporary okay now if this uh, problem with the kidneys are permanent then we have to do permanent dialysis or even go for a kidney transplantation so the answer to that question how long the dialysis should be continued depends upon the cause for the kidney failure that is number 1 number 2 that is a wrong notion that once you start dialysis you have to keep on getting it done lifelong no if the cause of temporary kidney func failure is removed and if the kidney start to functioning well we tend to remove these patients off dialysis and i have personally seen many patients who are off dialysis uh, after doing some 2 to 3 months because the kidney function gradually improves on its own or due to with the help of medications so that is a wrong notion that once you start dialysis the patients are constantly on dialysis no that is not true number 2 number 3 is the different types of dialysis again <clears throat> as the science is advancing as the evol- as the technology is increasing we have to utilize various modalities the previous phones which we used to use are no longer used now we are using smartphones in smartphones also there are so many types of smartphones similarly dialysis is basically uh, di- divided into multiple things one is the blood dialysis which is called as hemodialysis here in hemodialysis what what we basically do is either through a jugular axis or to an av fistula the blood of the patient is removed and it is filtered in an artificial membrane called as dialyzer and after filtering the blood is again repumped back to the patient 
so what does this dialysis do it basically filters off the blood number one number two it removes the excessive fluid from the body so these are the two basic fundamental principles of hemodialysis so what is hemo hemo means blood dialysis we already know so blood dialysis so this is the first type of dialysis second type of dialysis is stomach dialysis also called as CAPD okay this is called as uh, uh, continuous ambulatory peritoneal dialysis so here what what we utilize is <coughs> a fluid which is uh, glucose filled fluid we install into the peritoneum in, into the stomach it stays in the your peritoneum for a certain period of time it removes all the toxins it removes all the fluid and it is drained out so the advantages of CAPD are that it can be done at home you need not have to come every day to the hospital or day after day to the hospital like for example which happens in hemodialysis so in CAPD the patient can be dialyzed at home hence it is called as home dialysis or it is called as stomach dialysis in layman terminology because the dialysis is done in the stomach there is no access required for the blood line either you don't require AV fistula nor you require a jugular catheter uh, because this is done in the, in the stomach with the help of a CAPD catheter which is uh, put inserted surgically and it stays there for a long duration of time without getting infected you can even take bath with that so that is not an issue so dialysis in CAPD occurs through your peritoneal membrane and medically speaking both hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis are equal medically speaking okay but which one to choose whether to choose hemodialysis or whether to choose peritoneal dialysis again depends upon your individual factors uh, your comfort and the doctor's expertise okay now if you are in a remote area if you are in a hilly area if you are in uh, a, a very far off place and for you to commute to hospital uh, thrice a week or even sometimes four times a week is very difficult then you have to contemplate CAPD which can be done at home there are many <coughs> videos on YouTube if you just open YouTube and click CAPD you will come to see so many videos which are showing that CAPD can be done at home and it is very safe and it can be uh, what do you call it as it will lead to a very independent life you can can do dialysis can do your work children can go to school adults can go to offices they can do their routine work so this is called as CAPD also called as stomach dialysis so till now we were talking about uh, hemodialysis that is the normal regular um, uh, dialysis at the hospital second thing is the CAPD and the third form of dialysis which we do sometimes in uh, um, ICU is called as uh, continuous renal replacement therapy CRRT okay what is this basically this is again a type of hemodialysis which is done in a very sick patient whose blood pressure is very low or whose the patient is unstable on ventilator and requires requiring multiple medications in such cases the dialysis has to be modified in such a way that dialysis also occurs and the blood pressure does not fall so this is another type of dialysis CRRT that is usually do and done only in intensive care units when you look at the overall spectrum of treatment for kidney diseases the best is not hemodialysis the best is not stomach or peritoneal dialysis but the best is kidney transplantation yes kidney transplantation is the gold standard th treatment for kidney failure if your kidneys have failed it is always better if a donor of with the same blood group compatibility is available then uh, that has that is the best method of uh, 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 renal replacement therapy that is uh, kidney uh, transplantation the second best method would be either CAPD or hemodialysis either of which you can choose so now coming to the patient specification which patient do you do I suppose if you ask me which patient do I suggest uh, hemodialysis or which patient do I suggest CAPD ultimately the patient should be in end stage renal disease where his GFR is less than 15 or less than 10 
and he has barely any urine output or in either of any of the symptoms uh, which we designate as uremic symptoms <clears throat> that means the body has to be supported if the body is not not supported even at that point of time then the other organs will start giving up a patient with kidney disease will never die due to kidney disease he will usually die due to cardiovascular complications like arrhythmia or heart attack why this occurs this occurs due to the uremic milieu that is the toxins which are getting accumulated in the body will lead to effect of the other organs so whenever other organ effect is seen we tend to dialyze the patient and we tend to explain that please continue the dialysis so that your life sustains so another basic thing which many people do ask me is if at all we want to get dialysis done done then shall we do it twice a week or or once a week so i always answer this question with a counter question i ask how many days do you think your kidney is functioning per week in your body so in your body in a week how many days is your kidney functioning daily it doesn't take any holiday no sundays no holidays your kidney keeps on working right from your birth till your death so now suppose in a scenario where the kidneys have stopped functioning at least at least alternate day hemodialysis is the minimum which is required to sustain a good quality life there are people who are getting it done twice a week there are people who are getting it done once a week but that is based on the uh, prescription given by the nephrologist seeing the residual renal function that is how much amount of kidney function is still remaining if the kidney function is subtle amount of kidney functioning is there we tend to start at a lower dose and gradually increase up which is called as incremental dialysis but if the kidney function is not at all there and in such cases when we start dialysis we usually advise thrice a week hemodialysis okay now coming to the point where how, how much duration of the dialysis is required usual duration is 4 hours of hemodialysis Uh, in the center hospital you come to the hospital get dialysis for 4 hours go home come come back again 2 days later this is hemodialysis whereas in uh, peritoneal dialysis it is a continuous process what we can do is morning one bag of fluid is inserted and afternoon one bag and evening one bag of fluid is inserted and removed so it is a continuous process it is more physiological it mimics the normal functioning of the kidney and hence the cardiovascular outcomes in pay of patients who are on capd is very good in uh, developed countries they get dialysis done even 5 to 6 times uh, a day or sorry per week or uh, even daily dialysis is done this means that the more the dosage of dialysis the better the quality of life though this has not been completely studied and validated but uh, anecdotal reports do say that the more the dialysis the better the quality of life and uh, better the hemoglobin of the patient so this please keep these things in mind so if your kidneys are failing uh, you have to uh, take this support the support is dialysis don't fear dialysis dialysis is your friend treat it as your friend and it will uh, give you a good quality of life there are two types of basically two types of dialysis peritoneal dialysis and hemodialysis peritoneal dialysis is preferable for patients who are obese who are staying very far away who cannot travel and hemodialysis is preferable for those who are near hospitals who want to be under doctor supervision always and ultimately whichever type of dialysis you choose it is always better to anticipate that these dialysis procedures should be as a bridge for a, a renal transplantation because that is the best form of renal replacement therapy and if it is successful you can lead a good quality and a normal life also okay i hope i was very clear and thank you so much.